Hey, welcome back! Or welcome if it's your first time here. Five Nights at Freddy's is known for its compelling story, gameplay, and its other elements that make it special. One of these being the game's infamous renders. Now, if you're incredibly bored and want to trick people on the internet, you might try recreating one of these, which is much easier than it looks. If you know what you're doing. That's why in this video, I'm going to teach you how to recreate this render and how you can make several others with a few basic rules. The first step to making these renders is getting accurate models. Head over to DeviantArt and search for some FNAF models for Blender 3.0. When searched, you can- Hey, it's me! When searched, you can find several models made or imported for you to use. When making these renders, it's important that we find the most accurate models possible to not stretch too far from the source material. Since we're remaking a render from FNAF 1, we'll have to find the most accurate model that matches FNAF 1's Freddy. Now, this would be pretty hard to find, but luckily my buddy Rosband has blessed us with these godlike ports that we can use. Let's go down to the bottom of the page and click the Google Drive link. Then select Freddy and download them. Just make sure to save them somewhere you remember, as we'll need this location later. Now head over to Blender and select File, a pen, and go to the location you saved them. I've downloaded this model three times. Click his file and select a collection folder, then look for his name on the list and select it. Once you're done, hit a pen and he'll be summoned into your computer. I explain both getting models and importing models in more detail with these two videos that will be linked in the description. Next, reference. To get the best look possible, we're going to need some reference. This would be pretty easy to find if there weren't a million people trying to recreate the same image. Yeah. Thankfully, TM has created an entire folder full of FNAF renders from icons, logos, and images we actually see in the game. Simply click on the link in the description, hit the download button, and... You gotta be kidding me, bro. Once it's finished downloading, simply unzip the file using WinRAR or another program and save it anywhere on your drive. Alright, now to set up our scene. Go to the upper left corner of your screen and drag it a little bit to make another window. Select this drop down menu and go to the image editor. Then go to open and find your ref folder to import the FNAF 1 icon. Easy. Next, go to your output properties and make sure the resolution is at 1920 by 1920 pixels. Now select numpad 1 and try to align your viewport in the middle as best as possible. Then press Ctrl, Alt, and numpad 0 and your camera will automatically snap to that position. So you might have to tweak the camera a bit if it isn't exactly in the middle. Go to your camera settings and change the lens unit from millimeter to field of view. By moving this, we can see that the render gets flatter and less three-dimensional the lower we drag it. Now, how to get this number accurately is kind of tricky. You can either ask around somewhere, use SPI, or try and guess. But personally, I'm eyeballing it. With an FOV of about 1.5 and adjusting the camera a little bit, you should get this. Make sure to save your file before you have an unexpected crash and ruin your day. Going to viewport shading mode, we're going to move on to some render settings. Make sure your render engine is set to EV with render quality at around 120. Turn off ambient occlusion, bloom, and reflections. Make sure the shadows are set to 4096 pixels or 2048 if you have a lower end device. Go to film and make sure filter size is set at 0.50 pixels. Go to color management and make sure filmic is set to standard. After this, you should be golden. Now for lighting. Set the world color to black and head over to the render view. Press Shift A to import a light. Unlike the last time we did the scene, we'll be using sunlight instead of area lights. By rotating the light, the first thing you might notice is the fact that these shadows are atrocious. Go to your shadow setting and turn off smooth shadows. You can increase the power to get a better look at the scene and the shadows still suck. In your camera settings, go to clipping start and increase the amount until Freddy's about to disappear. Then change the end to its same amount, but increase it until Freddy appears again. Bada bing bada boom, now the shadows don't suck. Something you can do to make things better is turn the shadow bias down in your light shadow settings. Changing it makes more shadows appear where they should. Now, you might be asking, B, how do I know the color and location of the lights? Well, that's easy. If you look at Freddy's nose, the reflections give us the exact location and color of the lights. The shadows on his eyes can also help us with placing the main light. We can make some small adjustments to match our reference until it looks good. Making these things look perfect take quite a while.
Moving on to the next light, we can capture this blue light on the left. Something that can really help with the placement of this light is the shadow by Freddy's ear. The shape and location can help us with where we can put this light. Rotate the light around until the shadow looks exact and increase the power to help a little more. Once you're done, we can move on to the color. For this one, you can either eyeball it, or if you're lazy like me, you can just eye drop it and adjust it a little bit. Now for the red light, using the same rules as before, we're just going to change the position to match the reflections along with putting the brightness and color. So, at first glance, it looks like we're done. But guess what? We're not. There's still this purplish light over here that I've seen a few people forget. Import another light, increase the brightness, and do your thing. Look at the reflections and find some shadows to match this light as best as possible. If needed, you can adjust some of your previous lights to get a better result.
Amazing job! You just finished your first accurate render. Let's head over to the render menu and hit render image and after a while we should get something like this. Now, if you want to try something different and make some cool animations to go with Scott's style, you can learn the basics to animation with this video here.